What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the War Report here on Eagle Range. It is battle number 12, Saturday, April 8th, 2023. I'm your host, Falglada of the Gashiki Tribe, and we're going to fly right on through this tonight. So first up, we got some key terms. Prestige is the value of the land that you own. Acclaim is the total amount of prestige that you earn throughout the season. Renown is the difference between when you take a fief over and where it is now. So if it gains in levels, it goes up. If it loses levels, it goes down. Triumphs is the total value of your land at the end of the season. Comes to you in a triumph reward. It's beautiful. All the houses are fighting for it. All right, so let's go ahead and slide on over to the current events. Guess what, guys? Phase three is in the books all over we're moving on to phase four so april 9th through the 23rd will be phase four that is assert the thrones we will have all the stuff that we had this phase except we're going to be doing four more week for four more wars of this so everyone is going to be rank eight like max house rank is going to be eight all phase long like nothing changes so pretty much you're looking forward to four more wars of exactly the same that we've had right now uh, not a whole lot going on other than the intensity of those fights over there in Liang Yun are probably going to heat up pretty hot. So get ready for a lot of drama. Should be a good finish. Um, and we'll be, you know, just counting down the days here. All right. So politics scene. This got interesting. So for those that didn't know, Dauntless joined Nyquil. We also saw Warborn join Nyquil. Dynasty joined the Foundation. Immortal QC joined Revenant. Nemesis was formed between Vancura and Muramasa. And then Odyssey joined Rage. Vanguard joined Last Legion. So, whole bunch of stuff going on. Looking at the Alliance lineup, things got shaken up a little bit. Foundation is still on top with 72,870 total seasonal claim. Inevitable in second was 68,400. Maelstrom in third with 57,350. Hibernia with 46,450, Club Penguin 42,650, Lost Legion with 29,730, Nyquil 15,435, Fields of Fire 14,940, Gladiators 11,900, Nemesis 11,500, uh, Righteous Order with 7,650, Revenant 7,575, Rage 6,630, Triumvirate is 4,250, No Evil with 3,500, Trinity with 3,300, and Khan with 3,045. Next up, we're going to cruise on over to the war. First up is the Borderlands. This is where we began, and there's where we ended. I gave you guys a new color over in the Club Penguin territory. So looking at the kingdom changes, we had Damocles with one, the Notoriety Club with four, Chosen Ones with one, Blackwing Guard with one, Hit Integrity with one, Eye Kingdom with three, and Fight Club with one. Looking at the south end, that's where we began, and that's where we ended. Taking a look at the board, we have one with here, one with Muramasa, one with Dawn Hammer. Uh, Midway King has gained three. Immortal QC gained 2, I Kingdom gained 4, Immortal gained 1, and Wrathbound gained 1. Looking at the Houses of the Borderlands, we now have a pretty good stack here. Hit Integrity owns the most with 17% of the world, 4,200 prestige worth. Gosh, get dub in second with 3,050, I Kingdom with 2,400. Notoriety Club with 2,250, Fight Club 1,500, Odin 1,350, The Fallen 1,350, Taco House 1,050, Vancouver with 900, Atlas with 900, Midway Kings with 900, Damocles with 900, then Homegrown with 750, Here with 600, Muramasa with 600, Gashiki with 500, Vigilantes with 450, Immortal QC with 300, Dawn Hammer 150, Chosen Ones with 150, Immortal 150, Wrathbound 150, and Blackwing Guard 150. Alright, so taking a look at the wonderful world of Long Ting. This is where we began, and that's where we ended. Yep, you got it right. Lawless Knights renamed from Lawless, and they took over 12. And then Vanguard took over 7. Noble squeaked one in there, just right next to the capital. Then if you look at the Houses of Longting, you got three now. 
Vanguard with 3,950, Lawless Knights with 2,750, and Noble with 150. Taking a look at Liang Yun, this is where we began, and that's where we ended. Looking at the battles, we have Vindication gaining 2, Gaia gaining 2, Durandon gaining 5, Immortal QC with 2, Bloodstone Legion with 1, Lawless Knights with 2, and Bactria with 1. Looking at the Houses of Liang Yun, we had the Liang Yun Legion with 26%, that is 6,370. Gaia with 3,965, followed by Vindication with 3,510. Iota with 3,185, Durand in 2,730, Warriors Nation with 1,820, Dynasty with 1,560, Immortal QC with 390, Lawless Knights with 390, Bactria with 195, Inquisition with 195, and Blackstone Legion with 195. Looking at that race for Dai Chang. We are having quite a little back and forth going on right now. So far, the only solid is the Liang Yun Legion is still primed and ready to defend. We have Inevitable with 9,295 versus Foundation with 7,475. Both of these are well overqualified, and uh, it will likely be a death match between these two. We'll see who's left standing at the end of the season. All right, so... Time for some rankings. First up, we have some house level 8s. Gaia, Vanguard, Vindication, Iota, Durandon, Warriors Nation, and Dynasty all reached that rank 8 this week. Top house level 7 houses, we have Hidden Integrity, Lawless Knights, uh, I Kingdom, The Notoriety Club, Fight Club, The Fallen, Odin, Vancura, Atlas, Midway Kings, Homegrown, Vigilantes, Inquisition, Chosen Ones, Dawn Hammer, Savages, Chang'an City, Yin Yang, and Warborn. In the House Level 6 category, we have Gashki Dub, Immortal QC, Here, Gashkia, Immortal, Wrathbound, Khan, Odyssey, Thoys, Noctum, Invicte, Dauntless, Soda, and Speak. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at those movers and shakers. So tonight... Lawless Knights takes the crown with 14 new fiefs. Second is Vanguard with 7. I Kingdom with 6. Notoriety Club and Immortal QC. or Notoriety Club with 4. Then we have Immortal QC and Durandon with 3. Noble, Vindication, Bactria, and Bloodstone Legion all scored 1. Biggest losses, Gaia lost 6. Dynasty lost 4. Hit Integrity lost 3. Taco House lost 3. Warriors Nation with 3. Khan with 3. The Fallen with 2, Blackwing Guard with 2, Savages with 2, and Vancura with 1. Let's go ahead and take a look at those top 10 houses. First place, we have Hidden Integrity of Club Penguin with 4,200 prestige. Level is 7, the Rio Cane East is the Liege. Population is 99, Seasonal Claim of 24,450, Renown of 750, Property Value of 215 Triumphs. All right, next up in second place, we have Gaia of Inevitable with 3,965 prestige. Level is 8, Blackwing Siege. Population is 99. Seasonal claim of 19,305. Renown of 455. Property value of 155 triumphs. Next up in third place, we have Vanguard of Lost Legion with 3,950 prestige. Level is 8, Tong Tong is Liege. Population is 97. Seasonal claim of 26,590, renown of 755, property value of 185 triumphs. Next up in fourth place, we have Vindication of Inevitable with 3,510 prestige, level is 8, adapt as a liege, population is 100, seasonal claim of 22,035, renown of 390, property value of 150 triumphs. Next up in 5th, we have Iota of Foundation with 3,185 prestige. Level is 8, Canadian Cowboys Elige. Population is 93. Seasonal claim of 33,010. Renown of 1,040. Property value of 140 triumphs. Next up in 6th, we have Lawless Knights of Lost Legion 
with 3,140 prestige. Level is 7, Magnus the Archer is the Liege. Population is 98, seasonal acclaim of 3,140, renown of 0, property value of 130 triumphs. Next up in 7th we have Goshki Dub of Hibernia with 3,050 prestige. Level is 6, Foglotus the Liege. Population is 90, seasonal acclaim of 29,100, renown of 500, property value of 170 triumphs. Next up, in 8th place, Durandin of Foundation, 2,730 prestige, level is 8, real trillions of liege, population is 99, seasonal claim of 16,395, renown of 300, property value of 95 triumphs. Next up in 9th place, we have I Kingdom of Maelstrom, with 2,400 prestige, Level is 7, I Secret is a Liege, population is 100, seasonal claim of 19,550, renown of 500, property value of 105 triumphs. And then bringing up 10th place, we have none other than the Notoriety Club of Maelstrom. 2,250 prestige, level is 7, total is a Liege, population is 97, seasonal claim of 20,900. Renown of 600 and property value of 115 triumphs. This brings us around to our full top 30 board. There you are. That's where everyone's sitting right now. Give you a quick second and then we'll fly over to the Alliance Movers and Shakers. Alright, there we go. Alliance Movers and Shakers, top. Gains of the night go to Lost Legion with 29 thieves total, 21 new thieves, Maelstrom with 9 new thieves, Revenant with 3, Gladiators with 1, Trinity with 1, and Fields of Fire with 1. Biggest losses of the night, Inevitable lost 8, Cons lost 4, Club Penguin lost 4, NyQuil lost 3, Prean Veritas lost 2, Rage lost 2, Foundation lost 1, and Nemesis lost 1. Taking a look at those alliance standings, first place goes to Inevitable with 9,295 prestige. Seasonal claim was 68,400, renown of 1,170, property value of 375 triumphs, population is 298, Vindication is a lead with Gaia and Warriors Nation at their side. Next up, in second place, we have Foundation with 7,475 prestige. Seasonal claim of 72,870, renown of 1,795, property value of 310 triumphs, population is 291. Iota is a lead with Durandid and Dynasty at their side. In third place we have Lost Legion with 7,090 prestige, seasonal claim of 29,730, renown of 755, property value of 315 triumphs. Population is 195. Vanguard is a lead with Lawless Knights at their side. Next up in fourth place, Club Penguin. With 6,600 prestige, seasonal claim of 42,650, renown of 1,050, property value of 320 triumphs. Population is 263. Hit Integrity is a lead with Fight Club and Atlas at their side. In 5th place we have Maelstrom with 5,400 prestige, seasonal claim of 57,350, renown of 1,750, property value of 260 triumphs, population is 296. The Notoriety Club is the lead with Eye Kingdom and Homegrown at their side. Next up in 6th place we have Hibernia with 4,900 prestige, seasonal claim of 46,450, renown of 950, property value of 265 triumphs, population is 285, Goshki is the lead with Goshki Dub and Odin at their side. Next up in 7th we have Nemesis with 1,500 prestige, seasonal claim of 11,500, Renown of 350, property value of 70 triumphs, population is 177. Vancouver is the lead with Mermasa at their side. Next up in 
Now, right, and then in eighth, we have Revenant with 1,290 prestige. Season claim of 7,575. 7, Renown of zero, property value of 50 tramps. Population is 270. Vigilantes is the lead with Immortal QC and Wraithbound at their side. In ninth place, you can find Fields of Fire with 1,050 prestige, seasonal claim of 14,940, renown of 450, property value of 60 triumphs, population is 194, Thoys is the lead with Damocles and Chosen One at their side. Next up in 10th place, we have Gladiators with 900 prestige. Seasonal claim of 11,900, renown of 300, property value of 40 triumphs. Population is 88. Midway Kings is alone in this alliance. And this rolls us over to our massive list of free agents, which is slowly shrinking. It's better than it was last week. Let's go ahead and click this over. There we are. The Fallen with 1,350, Taco House with 1,050, Bactria with 195, Inquisition 195, Bloodstone Legion 195, and Noble with 150. All right, this brings us around to our raffle. Let's go ahead and type in CB really quick for me, and I will raffle off this Artificer Stone. Somebody's going to win it. I know it's not the, the best prize, but it's a prize. At least you win something, right? Let's go. Come on. Let's get those CVs in there. Don't worry. Next week, you guys are going to want to be here for the kickoff of the next phase. I got a bigger prize for y'all. So, uh, better tune in next time. All right. Let's go and roll it. Congratulations to Action G. Jackson. You're the winner of an Artificer Stone. I will shoot you the code after the stream. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead and continue on through here. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Realm Economy. First up, top thief builders. Iota with 1,040. Vanguard, 755. Hit Integrity, 750. Homegrown with 650. Notoriety Club with 600. Gushki Dub with 500. Hit Eye Kingdom with 500. Gaia with 455. Dynasty with 455. And Odin with 400. Looking at the most prestigious properties in the land, we have a rank 8 at Ming Yu. Rank 7 for 60% bonus rewards over at Gao King and Akator. Thief level 6 category, we have North. That gives you a 40% bonus rewards. Thief level 5s, 20% bonus rewards at Barun, Avalis, Hebo, Gadoa, Yuxing, uh, Kochi, Shojin, and Whalewind. And then Fief level 4 rewards for a 10% bonus reward. You can go to Ilov, Karlsbach, Luge, Healy, Jindai, Yixing, Renlin, Chaofeng, Dar, Karalik, Kinu, Shokin, and Warlin. Taking a look over at the Borderlands, we currently have 100% free house occupancy with 9,850 being the prosperity growth. Very close to getting back to that 10,000. 10,000 mark. I think we can push it. Let's push it this week, guys, and break that 10k mark. The average fort level here is 4. Average town level is 3. Average village level is 1. Current renowned builders, Hit Integrity leads the pack with 750. Homegrown was 650. The Notoriety Club was 600. I Kingdom with 500. And Goshki Dub with 500. Top fortified strongholds in the region is Octor at rank 7. Top growing villages is Melnala at rank 3. Looking at those fief quests in the region, we have a really good one. Over at Akator, you can drop off 8 Janets for 4,000 player EXP. That's some of the best player EXP in the game. However, you do not want to do this quest if you are under level 100. You'll regret it later, trust me. Top Akator quest is the two legendary unit kits for 800 honor. That's a really, really, really good kit. If you haven't been doing that all week, you should really do that. Um, top house EXP gains, Baroon, 100 regional exotics for 240 house EXP. Looking at Siegecraft scene, we have Octor with optimal mortars, Shojin with well-made cannons, and Wellwin with well-made cannons. Looking at the unit kits, we have Octor with monastic knights, shield maiden, Azap, and crescent monk kits. 
Abolus has Berserker and Banner Guard kits, Kochi with Axe Raider kits and Crescent Monk kits, Shojin, Imperial Pike Guard, Yeoman, and Marmillo kits, and Willwin with Banner Guard and Huskarl kits. Next up, sliding over to Long Ting, we are starting to see some upgrading going on over here. It is 100% free house owned, 0% Legion. I'm pretty sure the Legion has evacuated. Prosperity, or the prop. Prosperity growth is 1,600. It started at zero. Uh, average fort level is two. Average town level is three. Average village level is one. Severance was the top renowned builder with 300, followed by Vanguard with 300. Thoys with 150. Ying Yang with 150. Noctum Invicte with 150. Top fortified stronghold is Warland at rank four. Top growing village is Dongwu with rank two and Sanquin with rank two. Looking at the thief quest in the region, we have the Warlin quest for two barbs, gets you 3,300. That's not quite as good as that Janet quest over there on the far side, but it is decent. So don't don't write it off. You also get 220 honor for that same quest. So it's not a bad quest to, to kind of boost your way up. Warlin does have the one epic artillery quest for 660 honor. Top house EXP is Warland with 100 regional exotics for 220. In all honesty, if your house is ranked 7 or higher, there's no reason to really keep pushing it at this point. There's nothing that's going to unlock other than just blow your money. Waste your view quest. Alright, so looking at siege craft scene, nothing. Unit crafting scene, nothing. Going to slide on over to Liang Yun, the main event region. We have 72% free houses versus 28% legion. 9,490 for prosperity growth. Which zone is going to finish above 10k? Will it be the Borderlands or Liang Yun? We'll have to wait and see. The average fort level is 7. The average town level is 5. Average village level is 1. Current renowned builder leader is Iota with 1,040. Liang Yun Legion with 455. Gaia with 455. Vanguard with 455. And Dynasty with 455. Top fortified strongholds, we have Ming, Ming Yu with rank 8 and Gao King at rank 7. Top growing villages, Heng, Luxing, Mari, Yangma, all rank 2. Looking at that Thief Quest scene, this is a really good region for Thief Quest. So Ming Yu has a 13,000 fine cotton for 4,500. You can also do the four coursers for 4,500 or the five coursers for 4,500. Two different variants there. Um, and then Renlin has the one epic artillery quest for 720. If you can't get to Renlin, go to Healy. Also drop that off for 660 there. Ming Yu has a top house EXP gains with 100 regional exotics for 360. And then for the siege crafting scene, we have Ming Yu with the optimal grape shot cannons and optimal balistas. Narth with well made balistas, op well made uh, Huacha arrow launchers. Godoa with well made balistas and Hebo with well made grape shot cannon. Looking at unit kits. Did that break it? There we go. Okay. Liang Yun unit kits. We have Ming Yu with Silidar, Yanyado, Cavalrymen, Imperial Pike Guard, and Camel Lancer kits. Narth has Rat and Ranger kits. Hasha Sheen kits, Imperial Spear Guard, and Palace Guard kits. Godoa has Imperial Javelineers, Crescent Monk. Hebo has Imperial Arquebuse and Kevtol kits. Yon Yuxin is Prefecture Heavy Cavalry and Crescent Monk kits. And that brings us to the end of our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I do hope that I managed to get through this quick enough for you. And I look forward to seeing you guys on Tuesday. It's going to be a pretty fun time. So look forward to seeing you all. Have a good one, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. And go give your family members a hug. Because I say so. See ya.